What's going on, Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another deck profile from PPG Halloween. I am here with Carlos, who did who got fourth place at the event with Dark Broly. Carlos, how's it going, man? Uh, pretty good so far. Are you? Uh, pretty good, man. Pretty good. I love I love Dark Broly. I've been talking about it a lot on the channel, so I'm very happy to see that you topped with it. Um, so what made you want to play this deck originally? So originally, I was thinking of playing Green Gotenks. Uh, but I wanted to play something more fun, something new, so I just took this, and it actually ended up working out pretty well. Nice, nice. And now, um, I think, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit more, I think, as we get into the deck, but, uh, would you consider it more of, like, just a straight-up mono black aggro deck, or would you call this a little bit more mid-range? What, what's your take on the deck in that regard? Well, the thing about the deck is that you can pivot between, uh, mid-range and aggro, because you can, like, bombard your opponent with, like, 30k beaters. Right. Or you can simply, like, recycle Demon Realm, which just warps cards from their hand, and you're just taking away their advantage that way. So you can even pivot to, like, a little bit of a, of a control thing, right? That's what you're kind of saying? Exactly. Very cool. All right, so let's get into the deck. So we have four of the blocker dark broly we have four of the ravager which ravager is definitely one of the best cards just recycle it rip cards out of your opponent's hand also gives you a very unique edge in the sinchenron matchup because you can wipe their negative energy dragon balls out of the drop area but i do have to ask you about only three uncontrollable berserker which i think is honestly one of the better dark brolies i would say arguably the the blocker is the worst one but um yeah, yeah so what's your what's your reasoning for the three dark broly uncontrollable berserker that's that's only because I only had three at the moment. Oh, uh, okay. I was kind of thinking that might be the case, but uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd probably recommend playing four, right? Yeah, exactly. Just to make it more consistent. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So when you're yeah. going for these Brolies, I mean, I think it's relatively obvious. Like, you know, you're going for Uncontrollable Berserker when you need the removal. Uh, Realm Ravager is great for a turn one play if you happen to be able to drop a Dark Broly on turn one. Um, do you ever prioritize the blocker, maybe in, like, certain aggressive matchups? Yeah, I think the... The blocker you will probably only need it like against like reboot gohan or like really aggro decks maybe vegex yeah i played i played a lot of games actually where i actually never even play the blocker one you know sometimes you'll play it when you just have available extra resources and you and you just get the extra 30k swing but yeah when you're up against aggro is is probably when you want to get go for it but otherwise the other guys are super strong so we'll exactly. go here with a lot of our turn one plays so i'm gonna just mention it real quick and we'll talk about it in a minute you do also play a kid goku engine so is a lot of this stuff do you do you go for this stuff on turn one or do you go for a little bit later so the broly and the seven star ball if you have a turn one i, do, I just do that so you can start ripping cards from your opponent's hand okay um and then if you get the toa you can also do that to get the seven star ball so i added the kiku engine just to make you have another starter card because uh the broly and the seven star ball that's two cards that you need to open with right and then the toa you're not always going to get toa but uh, the Kid Goku, that can also get like your more cards to your hand, and you can also get more 30Ks on the board. Gotcha. And then how often do you find yourself using the Toa effect to pick up a Dragon Ball? Because I actually, I, I play this deck a decent amount as well, and I and I always try and use it before I'm about to like do an Overwhelm, right? So I can get my Dragon Balls back and then just, you know, replay Brolies and things like that. Do you find that you use that kind of mana sync type of effect a lot? Exactly. That, that too. And sometimes when you like think you're just gonna end your turn and you have like one open energy and you can defend your opponent's attacks i'll just use that energy to get the ball back to the hand right yeah i totally see i totally see that because there's not like a ton of great negates in black like you have protect the people you have max power come you have power burst sometimes but like you're not you're not keeping two open for a topo you're not keeping two open for or one open for like a heroic prospect so i i think you can actually afford to tap out a lot uh, especially in the early turns of dark broly for sure yeah exactly so the kid goku engine this is what i really want to talk about a, a pretty decent amount because i see a lot of lists don't play it i personally don't play it because i feel like it takes up it does take up a decent amount of space in the deck and i, and I can see that that compromise has already kind of been made because you're playing three kid goku two four star balls and then two nari rama so the nice thing about dark broly is he turns nari rama into a 5k combo which um was one of the big reasons why people weren't playing black skillless battle cards and other decks but um after playing with this over the weekend do you think would you consider it like an essential package do you think um you don't need to play it would you cut it what, what are your thoughts on it after the weekend so after the weekend it's not needed but it is helpful Okay. I think once the draft box six comes out and you get more of those uh, cards, you can you can probably move some of the the ratios around. Um, the only reason why I really liked it was because it thins out your deck, so you have more thirty k's to mill with your leader. Mm -hmm. um, you get uh, pretty much a combo of power during your opponent's turn because you're on awakened leader. It's kind of like defenseless because you need like the thirty k's and they're, they're like they have no combo power. Right. And then also with the super combo. 
I use the Vegeta, you can put back the 4-star ball, draw 2, and then use K Goku to get the 4-star ball back. So you're not really negating any card there's cards there. That is actually a really cool combo I didn't think about, so I, I do actually like that a lot. Uh, and then second question, how often do you did you find yourself using the tap 2 of Kid Goku to actually bring out a 30k? Did, did you do that a lot? Not so much? I actually never used it. <laughs> oh, okay. So most of, most of the time was using energy yeah. for other things, really? Exactly. Gotcha, gotcha. So, I, yeah, I think I think the Kid Goku engine, it's, it's an engine that people always go to with a mono black deck. I mean, it makes sense. It's, it's pretty free card economy, like just constantly adding cards. So I do definitely see the idea of wanting to try it out, but... Uh, I think um, it's definitely probably a player preference sort of thing. But obviously, you did very well with the deck, so who am I to say? Um, we have two Toa, Dark Aura, Deluge. I actually find this card very useful in the deck. Uh, I play four copies. Maybe three is like a better number, but um, I find it very useful. So do you ever wish you had more copies? Just like find your 30Ks in the drop and add them back to your hand? I think uh, I never missed it, but I think it would have been useful to see a third one because most of them, like you're pitching them off with your leader. Right. Or sometimes, like, if you get one really early on, you just charge it. But it would be helpful to just, like, play one, pop one of your rested 30Ks mm -hmm. after your leader has swung, and then, like, get back, like, the one-star, the one-drop Broly or an overround piece. Yeah, that's that's another good point as well. I think I think some people under undervalue her ability as, like, a combo enabler because, yeah, when you can't swing with your leader or you have no more swings for the turn, sometimes you need a way to pop those 30Ks to replay them. So she actually is great for that as well. Uh, and then one copy of SS4 yeah. Bardock. Um, I know this is a particularly a very good card against non-blue decks where they can't trunks it back to your hand. Uh, another another one I want to ask you. Did you ever wish you had more copies or was one okay? I think one was okay because the Toa Deluge, she can get it back in case you mill it. Right. And another thing that I forgot to mention about the Toa is that you can actually target herself, mm -hmm. pop herself, and then you can just get back something else so you don't have to like get rid of your 30Ks. Like your brolies for sure for sure yeah toa is basically a one energy get anything that you want back from your drop which i think makes her very very good um and then two mass sand brainwash no more so the crazy thing about this card is you overwhelm it it puts three back into your drop and then you can either use your leader effect or you can use like or you you could actually use either side of your leader effect excuse me to put three more back into your drop and then if you have a way to get rid of the brainwash no more like it could be toa it could be your leader effect uh that's seven and then you can play a dark broly so it's a pretty big combo enabler uh, i think that's pretty obvious but did you ever actually use the activate battle to save yourself no i didn't against i played against one invoker and i was saving it in my hand just in case i needed it mm -hmm. but i ended up winning the game before you got to five energy very nice gotcha so it is there in case you need it which is actually nice because exactly. just like i was talking about before you know black doesn't have the best uh negate options they have really zero counterplay options so having at least this activate battle is nice but yeah mass sand is definitely a, a big combo enabler when you want to be super aggressive so then we have here some more utility cards one mirror soft in the sky i love this card in the deck uh just a, a great finisher and then you have two gravy and demigras thrall so there are, there are a certain number of cards you can play that like refill your drop area. You could play this card. You could play the Unison, for instance, the Broly Unison. So why did you go with this one? And, and did, it, did it perform up to your expectations? So I ended up playing Gravy after testing the, the Unison. Um, and I found that the Unison, because it can attack in the early turns, it was kind of like useless, like in the hand and you can't combo with it. And then with Gravy, you can use it in your early turns when you're unawakened combo power and then put stuff back into your drop area and then also when you're awakened it's also still really really good and then with your leader effect so you're putting three three cards back into the drop and then with gravy you put two more in itself that's already six gotcha so gravy so definitely that, worked up to your expectations then yes yes it was really good gotcha gotcha and then two ss3 tag team gohan uh this is a card that i it has it obviously has synergy within the deck right but this almost feels like a card that like you're cutting 30ks to fit it in and then like um i just want to ask like to fit a card like this in do you ever feel like you're messing with the consistency of your leader or did you feel like you you always hit the right number of 30ks because i think i think some people wonder like what's the right number of 30ks how can i make sure my leader is hyper consistent right yeah uh so you but the way that the, i built the deck was you're not always gonna hit um like you know three 30ks mm -hmm. of the top um but I, I felt like having because i was expecting to play a lot of red broly br so having this in the hand I felt like it was going to be useful to block more of their attacks mm -hmm. while they're taking away cards from my hand so i put it in there as a tech piece and it actually it worked out some in some games 
Gotcha. That makes a lot of sense. And, and two, it's also, you know, when you pop off a Dark Broly, it's a, it's a free 15k attacker as well. That's definitely not bad at all. Uh, and then two Makikabora. I love this card in the main deck in Dark Broly. It just synergizes so well. Uh, Surging Dragon Balls. And then, uh, you know, obviously, because there's so many decks in this format that rely on chains. So having Makikabora to stop those chains, uh, did, it, did it ever just like outright win you a game when you played it? Okay, so against the mirror match, it just wins the mirror match. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then in testing, I was playing. I was testing against Red Broly, and one thing that I like to do was say they already have their four drop out, and then they're about to pop off their next turn, go to the five, go to the six. You summon Mechie, you call the four drop, and then you summon your Dark Broly that warps a card on the board, so you warp their four drop on the board. Yep. And now their leader skill won't trigger so they can't summon another four drop so they'll summon like a, a one drop or the three drop and then next turn they can't go up the chain anymore yeah and the nice thing about that is like when they get to play the four drop on your turn they get to rip another card out of your hand so preventing that is just is so ridiculously good and then some of the final cards in the deck two power burst two protector of the people so this is the negate lineup you went with how did it work out uh, i'm actually i'm actually maining max power right now i like that one a lot but i think you definitely have a lot of options there so how did two power burst two protector work out for you i like two power first i was testing uh three power burst but i, I saw it too much because your, your your leader filters so much and with the super combos you filter so much as well so you're always going to have an engage in hand and i felt like with this deck you tap out a lot so having power burst just to take life maybe on like a single swing wasn't worth it so i only put down two and the protect of the people was really good because i expected to play a lot of blue decks so that was really good against obuni very nice yeah and it kind of sucks that you know we're this is the best of one tournament but you know we we have to be grateful for what we have right but being a best of one tournament you got to exactly. make certain concessions um in your main deck for sure and then two hidden power supreme kai um I don't know how I feel about this card in the deck because sometimes you really want to use your energy for like, you know, Broly and Toa plays and stuff like that. So, I mean, would you say that this is like a staple card in the deck just to finish games? No, I wouldn't say it's a staple card because most of the time, like your 30k swing does a lot of damage that you don't really need, uh, you know, to hit it with a double strike. Exactly. That's kind of what I found too. Um, but I mean, it's definitely not a bad card by any means, but I, I kind of agree with what you're saying there. And then the four super combos, of course, that's yeah. just super staple. Uh, and you taught me a very cool yeah. combo with the four star ball, which I like a lot. So uh, with that all being said, that's the deck. Any major changes you would make to it? Uh, I think I'm, I'm going to revisit it. And then like, obviously add the, the, the other four, the six drop Broly, the one that I was missing. Right. And then just tinker around with the the Kinko engine, maybe take it out and add some more cards in. But definitely, once Draft Box six, six comes out, you're gonna add the Demigra, that's for sure. Very cool, man. All right, any uh, shout outs you want to throw out there? Uh, you know, shout out to the dudes. Uh, those are my teammates. They helped me test, and they gave me uh, you know critiques on the deck. And then you know, shout out to you for having me on. Awesome, man. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.